Hey guys, Dr. Kamal again here to uh, continue on our ultrasound series. Uh, so the next pathology or an anatomical structure that we are going to talk about today is a neuroma. So oftentimes in the clinic, uh, it can be an easy clinical diagnosis, but oftentimes uh, there may be difficulty with uh, injections being guided into the right spot. And an ultrasound is helpful in identifying an aroma and being sure that your injection is, is placed properly. Also, there are other uh, pathologies that may present in the intradigital or intermetatarsal space that may give similar symptoms to an aroma. And I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to identify an aroma as well as the inter intermetatarsal spaces as well as any other pathology. All right, so as far as patient positioning, uh, we have the patient in the supine position uh, as we normally have them seated, uh, foot is dorsiflex, and we have good access from the plantar view, but we could also do the same thing from the dorsal, and I will show you that now. So the first is going to be a longitudinal view of the intermetatarsal space, so you're going to have the probe oriented longitudinally. You're going to place it right over the space. And the first thing that I see here is the fourth metatarsal head. And I like to swipe over so that I know that I'm right in the inner space. Once I know I'm in the inner space, I can see a lot of the uh, hyperechoic fat. And then I move a little bit more and I see the other metatarsal head come into the view. So again, as I go back here, I see uniform hyperechoic fat. Now, um, if there were a neuroma present, you will see a round um, hypoechoic mass take it uh, pretty much displace the hyperechoic uh, fat. So now we're going to do it again in the transverse view. In the transverse view, what's great about the transverse view is that you can see the relation of the intermetatarsal uh, fat w in relation to the different metatarsal heads. So as you can see here, we have the three metatarsal heads, three, four, and five and you can see the uniform hyperechoic fat in between the metatarsal heads. Now, if we were to um, be concerned that we have an aroma, then we will see again here hyper a hyperechoic mass, um, sorry, a hypoechoic mass that replaces a hyperechoic fat. And <clears throat> same thing from the dorsal aspect, I'm just gonna show you real quick so let's do a transverse here and you can see the metatarsal head just the same um, and what's beautiful about the ultrasound machine is that it's a dynamic imaging modality so as you can see i am palpating in in the intermetatarsal space and then i can see those metatarsals separating or moving now how this can be advantageous for you is if you do see a, a round uh, hypoechoic mass and you think it's an aroma it may also be an adventitial bursi. So what would happen is if you were to press, then if it were a bursa, then you would see it collapse. However, if it were an aroma, you would just kind of see it translocate a little bit. So in this patient, uh, it's normal. There's just a uniform hyperechoic fat, so no concerns there. But I will show you guys in a few images of some abnormals. All right, and here we have an image of normal and longitudinal appearance of the inner space. Normally, the inner metatarsal web space should contain only hypoechoic fat, as we've, as we've mentioned before and as depicted here. Dorsal compression can be helpful to assess the margins of the neuroma. It is when there is normally hypoechoic fat is replaced with an incompressible hypoechoic mass that we can diagnose an aroma. Now taking a look at this image of the third web space, we can see a well-defined hypoechoic mass replacing the normally hyperechoic intradigital fat consistent with the neuroma. As opposed to the transverse image, the neuroma on a longitudinal image will appear larger. All right guys, so here is a normal picture of a transverse appearance of the forefoot at the level of the metatarsal heads. The metatarsal seen in cross section demonstrate a curvilinear echogenic interface with posterior acoustic shadowing. The intermetatarsal web spaces are normally uniformly hyperechoic because they normally contain only fat, interdigital nerves, and small vessels. And this image is a the same transverse image, but you can see um, 
This image demonstrates a normal third web space as well as a second web space with a neuroma. It is important to note that the hyperechoic fat is replaced with a round, well-defined hypoechoic mass. The metatarsals appear normal in this image. And here is another longitudinal image of the second web space demonstrating an aroma. However, in this picture, note the comet tail appearance of the proximal border of the neuroma, consistent with feeding interdigital nerve. All right, and lastly, um, as discussed before, this is a transverse image at the level of the third and fourth metatarsal heads seen in the short axis view. The third and the fourth metatarsals are noted as seen in the image. The bones seen in short axis demonstrate strong echogenic superficial interfaces with posterior acoustic shadowing. Note the complex hypoechoic material distending the third web space consistent with an intermetatarsal bursa. And if compressed, you would note that there would be compressibility of this bursa as opposed to an aroma which would not compress. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned something. Until next time.